So for prepping this dash to be painted, there's still some things that need to get removed. I mean, it looked like everything was gone, but it's not. There are some nut clips. There's one there. There's a number of them on the bottom of the door opening for the glove box. There's a light switch for the glove box. And there's the ignition switch. So I'm going to show you how I get the ignition switch out. So there's a tiny hole right there. And I have this stiff piece of metal wire that I'll stick in the hole. The other thing I need is to have the key in the ignition and the ignition turn to the accessories or farthest counterclockwise. Push this in, and as I do, there's feel a spring, and I'm depressing a kind of a button tab. When I get it pushed in, then I want to continue to turn the key counterclockwise. You'll hear a click, and out it pops. So, with that out, now I can remove this retaining nut on the ignition switch, and that opens up the hole for here. So, I will do that next. So, it appears either I it must have been me. I've done this before. There's a little bit of a disrupted metal on this ring. Unfortunately, it's three notches. I'm not going to put a wrench on the outside and grab it. That'll just chew that ring up. Um, if they were two across, and I could take a neonose pliers and stick it in and grab the neonose pliers and rotate it. But in this case, I'm left with taking a screwdriver into that notch and tapping it and hope that the ring turns. Next groove. And at this point, I might be able to just hold the switch and turn it out the rest of the way by hand. So, and there is the ignition switch. I don't know if you can see down in there where I was depressing that button. Anyway, we'll push this back behind the dash for now. One of the other things I looked at while I was in here was this convertible top. It appears that the wires that are connected to it go all the way through. You now this one, these two go to a connector which provides power, but this yellow one appears to continue through the firewall. And unfortunately, it's the yellow one is not the one that I can actually get loose. Um, it would be this one here, which I don't really need to get loose because this plug would fit through the hole. I need to figure out what to do with the yellow one. Maybe there's a disconnect farther under the dash, but that will allow me to remove this top switch, which I definitely need to do. Um, I'm probably going to remove the steering wheel I can always steer the car by uh, pushing on the front wheels to get it in and out of the garage. And with the steering wheel out of the way, it'll make it feasible to actually sand and prime and paint that. Um, we talked about more wire spring clips all across here. Sorry about that. So, kind of document here where all these clip nuts, nut clips, whatever the heck they're called, are located so that everything can go back in the way it came out. So we'll get working, we'll fill a bag with stuff, and I'll get back to y'all. Alright, so that was interesting. This is the yellow wire coming from 
the top switch. It goes to, I'm not sure what that is, apologize for the lighting or the lack thereof, confusable switch. This goes to the battery, uh, a fusible link, I guess that's what it would be called. Um, so what's happening is this would allow you to have power at that switch without the engine being turned on so you could lower the top without having the key which would be handy if you were in a rainstorm all of a sudden and you didn't have the key handy and you wanted to get the top up you could so I'm going to disconnect that yellow wire now that I've documented where it came from that should allow me to remove that switch which I'll bag up and put in a cubby somewhere actually I'll put it with a box that says gauge stuff because all that things that are coming out of the dash. I thought I'd go ahead and test this switch, not really figuring there was any way in the world it could work. Uh, I connected up the black lead of my dwell meter, or my dwell meter, I connected up the black lead of the multimeter. I have it set on an ohms reading. I connected up the red lead to the red wire and discovered that when I push it away from the red wire All right, that didn't work there we go push it towards the red wire and very little resistance actually I was wrong I had it on the black wire so now let's move it to there we go now it's on the red wire and it seems anti-intuitive here that I push the switch towards towards the black wire when connected to the red wire and the switch works wonderful so not that I have a pump there's the pump not that we know that the pump works or that the cylinders will hold fluid but that's the gist of the system is a pump with an attached motor to it and then drives through two hoses which would have to be replaced to go into the cylinders and just going back and forth. I don't believe there's a reservoir. I believe it's just a, a closed system. We'll get into that. Probably uses brake fluid. That's a future project. Alright, we'll see if we can remove the steering wheel. So this horn cap just comes off. There we go. Just a spring clip holds it in there. And there are going to be three, I believe, Phillips screws down at the bottom here. We'll just remove this center nut and see what that frees up. It doesn't look large enough to be the nut that holds the steering wheel to the column. But take it off and see, because down at the bottom of those three holes are not Phillips head screwdrivers. They're Phillips head screws. So this is not like on a Corvair. Which is surprising. So we have 
that nut that was really the only thing holding this assembly in place. Next thing behind it here is this contact with a spring on it. For when you depress this ring, regardless of where it is in, in rotation, this is going to contact a, a ring on the inside. So, those it could. I see the holes for the puller here, so it is possible that that's all that was necessary to access removing the steering wheel. It really was, strangely enough, just this nut holding it on to the column. So I'm going to go get my puller. Pause this while I go find it. Well, looking at the setup here, now that I've got this jury rigged in place. There are two tapped holes in the hub of the steering wheel and then there is the bolt that is the end of the column or the threaded end of the column. So the idea is to take these two screws, drive them into the threaded holes on the steering wheel hub and then by turning this in you in effect pull the steering wheel relative to the end of the cough column. So let's see how that works. Now one other thing I didn't note um, or didn't video and that is that there is a mark on the steering wheel hub and a mark on the column. They are currently in line with each other, which I will want to obviously replicate when the steering wheel goes back on. So let's see how this goes. see end of the column the spline that the steering wheel aligns with the line should be right on top the uh, this is all part of the horn system here the spring is just to kind of keep tension on the whole assembly this screw here is going to come off and that's going to free the turn signal lever and then this surround should be able to come off to be painted and all of these horn pieces here should come off of the column so we'll just get working on that and bring you back when everything is free and clear so the spring just pulled off and the round disc also just pulled off and to note that the horn spring plunger whatever it is was sitting at about oh, 10.30, 11 o'clock on the, the dial here with the column pretty much straight up and down. Hopefully it comes into focus. There's the mark on the column that aligned with the mark on the steering wheel. The steering wheel's upside down. I'm gonna have to do some repairs on this steering wheel. Got another steering wheel. It's under debate as to which one I use. So other than the hub, this one actually appears to be, well, that's kind of not good. Yeah, everything is repairable. You can clean this out, bondo it, and it uh, gets repainted anyway. Well, we'll see what we end up doing. So back to here, in order to get the turn signal switch out of this column housing. There's some Phillips screws, I believe three of them coming loose should allow this whole thing to just slide off. Um, the wire harness I will check but coming off of here it should be loose. I'm not really even sure what this this guy here just appears to be some sort of guard. So, 
Way harder than it needed to be. Alright, so let's take those screws out, take out the switch. Alright, so took out those three Phillips head screwdrivers, and what they were doing was they were sandwiching the switch to the column housing. You can see back in there, there's a threaded hole, there's a threaded hole, and there's a threaded hole. So that whole housing column slides back now and this switch slides forward well, wasn't my horn the lovely Lorianne is home so we'll work these wires out remove this switch and the column housing for prepping for painting this will all get painted the red as well. Right, so that's loose. You can see down in there. I'll figure out how to get the column uh, housing off here. Need two hands. Alright, so this as you pull it out, you rotate it, and that frees it off of the column. These holes here, and there are probably some slots. Anyway, once that is free, work it to get it entirely free. There. Then this ring is able to come off brings the connector with it and now the column and the shaft are separate from each other. By the way this switch had a bearing in it that holds everything in place there. That kind of gives an indication of where everything is supposed to sit up higher. So, it appears that the column back in there and now you certainly can that plate is supposed to screw to the firewall I guess I have pulled those loose when I needed to drop the column in order to get the dash apart so I should be able to rotate this and take this whole column off to be sanded and primed so we'll do that